Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jack Daly, director of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Telstar 50 Anniversary Symposium. We would like to thank the Embassy of France for partnering with the Smithsonian to present this program. In addition, we are grateful to the Radome Museum of Telecommunications for co-hosting the symposium from France. The guiding words of the National Air and Space Museum's mission are commemorate, educate, and inspire. Today's program enables us to do all three. In July 1962, because of the satellite Telstar, a multinational event occurred that made history. The world's first transmission of live television brought the countries of France and the United States together in a way that amazed people on both sides of the Atlantic. We will commemorate that event in a few moments when we begin the live connection to our co-host in France. Today, people take live television from anywhere in the world for granted. The distinguished speakers on our panel will trace the history and explain the technology that brought us to this point. Their presentations promise to be both educational and inspiring. In the 21st century, global communications continues to bring us closer together and allows us to learn from one another. In 1962, we began this journey united in support of a common purpose, and five day, decades later, we continue to make great progress by working together. It is my pleasure to introduce the Master of Ceremonies for Telstar Symposium, Felipe Gasso. Felipe. Thank you, General. I'm very honored to shake hand of the General and the uh, host in this uh, splendid museum. I think if they choose me today, it's because they were looking for somebody with no French accent. <laughs> so we are here to commemorate, to remember, but we remember something who will be tomorrow and today in the future. So we are commemorating today the launch of the satellite Telstar 50 years ago. This challenge changed the face of Earth. This was a little launch to start, but a big step for communication. And this makes the world smaller, closer. In a couple of seconds, you have a watch? In a couple of seconds? No, in three minutes exactly. One minute and a half, because I have a chrono over there. In a one minute and a half, we're going to be in the satellite window. En français, on dit la fenêtre de tir. And 50 years ago, it was exactly the same. And when you will see the picture, old picture, of course, you see at the beginning a couple of journalism around the table. We don't see it directly, but they were crossing the fingers because the success was not guaranteed. So you have a people there, wedding, and the first picture the France received was the American flag, and behind the flag, the Earth station in the main. We have had there the representative of Maine. We're going to talk after that. So you're going to see the picture that France received 50 years ago, and now France in how many seconds? 40 seconds, France will send back. So you can say they take time. But you know, they keep it for their good purposes. They keep the pictures because they know. It's just, even after 50 years, it's just a beginning. And the French ambassador, we tell that how close we are in France and America in this space uh, challenge. And today, Plumer Boudou, I tried to, to ask my American friend to say that. Plumer Boudou, you better start you know, in early in the morning to pronounce it well, because even for French people, it's not so easy. So Plumer Boudou will send the picture in how many seconds, sir? Right now. So please. You, for some of you, you, can, you will remember that. The picture from Plumer Boudou. Hi, 
I think that's a pretty fair looking picture. Did you get the time, Gene, to the... Uh, yes, uh, they tell me that we have about eight or nine minutes before we have to transmit our photo facsimile. And uh, I hear that our fellows are working very hard to get word from the French station. There's some commotion there. I'm not quite sure what it means yet, Joe, and we don't want to announce anything until we do know. What do you mean they're, they're, they're working hard there? Are they actually trying to capture... Have they been Excuse on the... Excuse me, Joe. We just get an announcement right now. This, the French station has the picture. It's an excellent, clear picture. You mean we France. made an international We've telecast? We've made an international team? telecast. Well, let oh, me congratulate seven. you. Chansonnette, elle avait disparu, le pavé de ma rue était tout bête. Good evening, Europe. We had intended to take you at this time to Washington, where the President's weekly news conference is about to begin. But because of early acquisition at Andover, we got the Telstar circuit early, and the President has not yet started. So. Suppose we take you to a baseball game in Chicago instead, and perhaps it's only fitting that the sporting event, one of civilization's earliest ceremonials, be the first special event to be televised across the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just been informed that this baseball game is being seen in Europe right now over the Telstar satellite. Let's give all the baseball fans in Europe a big hello from Chicago. No score in the ball game. This point, the Phillies, no runs, one hit, no errors. The Cubs, no runs, two hits, no errors. Well, we realize that all of this doesn't make much sense to you folks in Europe, but if we hadn't shown you a bit of our national game on this first transatlantic show, we'd never have heard the end of it. As a matter of fact, right now, our colleagues who are doing the translating are going crazy trying to say runs, hits, and errors in Swedish and Italian. In any case, here it is, a brief glimpse of American baseball played in the biggest arena in the world, all the way from Wrigley Field in Chicago to the Coliseum in Rome. Eh bien, maintenant, il est temps d'appeler, comment vous dites Plumeur Baudou. On appelle Isabelle, qui est une de mes collègues. We're going to call Isabelle. She is a journalist in, uh, in Brittany. And Isabelle, tell me who is around you. Tell me the name of your guest. Good afternoon, Philippe. Wow, it's as if you're right next door. Let me introduce the people here, our speakers from Plumeur Baudou. First of all, Madame Christine Albanel. Uh, former minister, executive director of Orange, and president of La Cité des Télécoms, Mr. Robert Tate, the U.S. Uh, consul, and Monsieur Christian Marquet, uh, representing the president of region of Brittany. Back to you, Philippe. Yeah, it's time because, uh, you know, when you have a window satellite, the time is very important. So we're going to run and uh, let the podium to the secretary club. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Philippe, for that introduction. And good afternoon, and welcome to all those who are here in Washington. Good evening, and welcome to all those across the Atlantic. Today, of course, we live steeped in digital communications that inform us instantly about world events. We take for granted that this is as it should be and forget that the breakthrough that changed our world occur occurred just a short 50 years ago. 50 years ago, I was a university student at that time taking a course in how to use a new single technology called a computer. After the course, I put away my slide rule and never used it again. We were on the brink of a new way of living and communicating then, but we didn't know it. It was the time when modern technologies converged, the development of the transistor, the evolution and creation of rockets that could take, leave Earth's orbit, and a group of willing nations working together, the US, France, and Great Britain, that willed it possible and make something transformative like a communication satellite. 
when Dr. John Pierce of Bell Labs proposed a low Earth orbit communication satellite, many thought he was crazy. They didn't understand, and some didn't understand at all. One asked, how are you going to deal with the extension cords you need to get from Earth to space to power it? Others were a little more sophisticated and warned, it is far more than just a satellite, but a complex system on the ground that also required. This is an impossible systems task. But because of a committed, visionary team of engineers, businessmen, women, and national leaders, it happened. Telstar was launched on July 10th, 1962 at Cape Canaveral. It was the first privately sponsored spacefaring mission. Telstar 1 was a tiny three foot long satellite using roughly 14 watts of power, much less than today's modern laptop. It could only handle 600 phone calls and one black and white TV channel. It was tiny, but it had a huge impact on our world. Its successor, Telstar 12, is up there right now expanding its legacy. As historians know, 50 years ago, the first public multinational broadcasting program using Telstar, as was said, was supposed to begin with President Kennedy, but ended up being about a baseball game between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago Cubs. The popularity of American baseball soared worldwide. The first broadcast from Europe to the United States featured the great French entertainer, as we saw, Yves Montan, who sang La Chansonnette, and his fame expanded around the world also. So thanks to Telstar, France and the United States shared their national icons with the world. And it's fitting there today that we're honored by the presidents of His Excellency, Francois de Latre, Ambassador of France to the United States. Mr. Ambassador, tomorrow we'll be celebrating Mars Day here at the Air and Space Museum. I know you have much to celebrate this weekend as well, and congratulations to all of our French friends on both sides of the Atlantic on your national day. The launching of Telstar was a turning point in the history of global communications. It was a turning point in the history of the globe. We all know the power of the live image to change our image of an individual, group, or of a country. We know how global communications can create global community, if even for a brief time, and unite us in joy, tragedy, or triumph. Elections, revolutions, floods, concerts, and coronations, Olympic Games, we set up early rise up early to see them and watch them live. Sir Isaac Newton said famously, if I've seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. Today's symposium will tell us how those giants were, giants in government, giants in industry, parliament and Congress, and science and engineering working together to connect the world and expand our horizons. I wanna thank all of our experts on both sides of the Atlantic who will put all of this in perspective for us today. Many thanks to Intelsat, and France Telecom Orange for supporting the program. I only hope today's events can spark discussions of future cooperation. The Smithsonian tells these stories to inspire the next generation of engineers, scientists, politicians, and diplomats. Working with our partners around the world and with the support of our great donors and supporters, we'll continue to offer exciting learning opportunities for millions around the globe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Clou. And uh, it's time to go back to France, to Brittany. Isabelle, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Isabelle, are you listening to me? Thank you, Philippe. Madame Albanel will now talk about the evolution of telecommunication with the Radoms project and its impact in Brittany. Please, Madame. Thank you very much, uh, Wen Clau. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here with you, men of science, education, and culture, and also with our ambassador, François Delattre, among many important figures in Washington and also here in Brittany. Et je veux saluer évidemment tous les élus présents ce soir, le sous-préfet ainsi que Monsieur le Consul, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first intercontinental video transmission ever. Today, as you said, we are living and communicating on the technology superhighway at speeds that were unimaginable only a decade ago. Today, we Skype 
with our cell phones from one end of the globe to the other. It's indeed sometimes hard to realize how much of, of an achievement it was back in 1962 to send TV images from the US to Europe and the other way around as depicted in the short video within we enjoyed a couple of minutes ago. The best way to measure, to measure this incredible achievement is simply to pay visit to Plumer Bodou, right here in Brittany, where the Redham still stands. This sounds like an advertisement for Brittany and for the Cité des Telecom, but honestly, I'm always amazed by the Redham. As you know, this giant bubble is only an umbrella for the very special piece of apparatus inside. I mean, most of this technology was in the reception device, not in the radar. Nevertheless, because of its size and shape, it remains very futuristic. The way this project was carried out in 1962 also deserves admiration and some words. It would be easy to sum it up to technology competition in the context of the Cold War. Actually, it goes deeper than that. It's a great example of partnership between nations and people. What better symbol of the ties and friendship between our two countries, the USA and France? Can you imagine it took our telecom engineers here in Brittany less than a year to build the site for the radom, bring it up, assemble the reception here conceived by the NASA, and be all set for the eight minute reception slot Telstar would provide between Maine and Western Europe during the night of July 10 to July 11. That's cooperation and commitment at their greatest. Here in Brittany, this successful live transmission took far more importance than one ex would expect. And not just because our British friends failed to establish the contact with Telstar on that night. More seriously, it came at the first consecration of France's recent and ambitious telecommunication investment plan. At that time, France had just decided to catch up in the field of telecommunications, and a research and development center had just been created in Brittany, one of the most rural parts of France. Things really never were the same here after the contact we established in 1962. The Redham became the symbol of the new, of, uh, the new orientation Brittany was taking. Thanks to the Redham, that nowadays uh, becoming France's most telecommunication oriented region. In some way, Brittany, Brittany is a little bit of a Silicon Valley, even if I must admit that we do have much more rain here than you have in California. In the mid 80s, after the Redham took a well deserved retirement, it was transformed, as you know, into a telecommunication museum, the City des Telecom, in 1991, and it does attract thousands of visitors. We have had talks, very interesting, very interesting talks, about partnerships between the City des Telecom and the legendary Simpsonian Institution. It would be a great honor for us to move forward in this direction. This would be a great way to maintain and pay tribute to the contact established here 50 years ago. Beyond the pursuit of improved technology, telecommunications are bringing people together and helping them share visions, hopes, and cultures. A very big thanks you to all of those who have contributed and will contribute today to the share vision. And now I am glad to leave the floor to 
François de Latre, our ambassador in the United States, and who is also a old friend of mine, François de Latre. Merci. Thank you very much, Madame la Ministre, Secretary Clough, General Daly, Council General Tate, dear American friends, cher uh, Madame la Ministre, cher Christine Albanel, thank you so much, not only for your kind words, but for being part of this event at Orange Executive Director. Monsieur le Représentant du uh, Président de la Région Bretagne, Monsieur le Préfet, Monsieur le Maire de Lannion, une ville qui est chère à mon cœur. It's a great pleasure for my team and for me to be here with you today at the wonderful Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum as we are celebrating together Telstar 50th anniversary. And I really want to thank all those whose commitment and hard work have made this exceptional event possible. 50 years ago, indeed, Telstar was a technological breakthrough that produced a true revolution in the information and communication world, allowing any human being on Earth to potentially communicate with any other wherever they may be. In this respect, ladies and gentlemen, Telstar truly made science fiction a reality. Its technology helps save lives all over the world, avoid conflicts, and promote better understanding between peoples. So diplomacy and telecommunications go hand in hand, go together, and Telstar therefore deserves the title of honorary ambassador. We owe Telstar's great success to the talent and vision of so many brilliant scientists and engineers in America and Europe, and to the commitment of our two countries in particular. France, my country, is proud to have been instrumental in this wonderful adventure. Telecommunications have always been and still are one of France's technological fields of excellence, as illustrated by our Institut des Telecommunications, our many uh, top engineering schools and our leading telecommunication companies such as Orange in particular with Globcast America that I'd like to warmly thank again for their support and their leadership. Other companies are well represented today such as Alcatel Lucent with Marie Royce who is with us and I could give other names of course. Against this backdrop, dear friends, it should come as no surprise that innovation is today, more than ever, France's number one, number two, and number three priority. Ladies and gentlemen, our event, our exceptional event today, could not come at a better time between Independence Day and Bastille Day. And as French-American relations, and this is good news, have never, have never been stronger than they are today. Again, my warmest thanks to each and every one of you. Merci beaucoup. Eh bien, nous rappelons uh, Plumer Vaudou. Hello, Plumer Vaudou. We go, we're going to continue to speak in English there. Thank you, Philippe. Monsieur Tate will now comment about the important historic role communications have played in the Franco-American relationship. Mr. Ambassador, Madame la Ministre, Monsieur le Représentant de la Présidente de la Région de Bretagne, distinguished panelists, elected officials on both sides of the Atlantic, it is a real honor to represent the Ambassador of the United States of America to France, Charles Rifkin, at the celebration of the 50th anniversary of a milestone event in transatlantic communications and Franco-American relations. Communication in ever-evolving ways has played a crucial role in our historic relationship from the beginning. For example, Benjamin Franklin, who came ashore not far from here in the town of Auray, 
carried a message from across the sea to ask for military and financial assistance from France in our effort to become a free and independent nation for which we are eternally grateful. The accomplished painter, Samuel Morse, an American known for his portraits of Marquis de Lafayette and President John Adams, was studying art in Paris when he had the idea of the single wire telegraph system, a major step in communications technology in the 19th century. And at our recent Independence Day celebration earlier this month, I met a French hero who used an innovative form of communication that helped restore France's liberty during World War II. Starting at the age of 11, Jean-Jacques Auduc smuggled messages between the French resistance and allies in the handlebars of his bicycle. For his courage, Mr. Auduc became the youngest recipient of the French Croix de Guerre Cross of War Medal and was awarded the U.S. Medal of Freedom. And in 1962, the Telstar satellite launched a new era in communications with the world's first transatlantic television signal between Maine and Brittany with images of American baseball and Yves Montan. Telstar was the first device to communicate real-time information between continents. And today, real-time communication is crucial for the thousands of businesses, families, journalists, researchers, civic associations, and others that rely on the technology pioneered by Telstar. It is these same innumerable daily communications that link our two countries so closely and make it possible for us to address common global challenges together. Keeping the lines of communication open and secure, supporting the freedom of expression, whether in a town hall or in a chat room, and encouraging transatlantic educational and scientific exchanges will be key as we endeavor to harness the acceleration of te technological progress for a more prosperous and peaceful future. Thank you and happy birthday to Telstar. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Back to you, Philippe. So we're going to continue because uh, Plumer Boulou is very important, but the state of men was uh, very important also. The Earth station was exactly there. So the representative Michaud give some words through a video. Good afternoon. Bonjour. I'm sorry that I could not be with you in person today. Let me extend my warmest greetings to my friend, Ambassador Delatra, and all the guests who are in attendance today. As a co-chair of the Congressional French Caucus, I always enjoy gatherings like this to recognize the historical relationships of the United States and France. Today, I'm particularly honored to join you for an event that my home state played a part of. Five decades ago, Andover, Maine, in Plumier, Bordeaux, France were connected for a short 22 minutes. In our digital world, sometimes it is hard to believe how far we have come. But that short bond, less than a half an hour, played a historic role in advancing science and telecommunication forever. Former Senator Margaret Chase Smith is synonymous with statesmanship across Maine and the United States. How proud Senator Smith who played an important role in Telstar's success must have been when the first image shown across the Atlantic Ocean was a live shot of the American flag being flown in Andover, Maine. Because of this unique partnership 50 years ago, the world saw the potential in space and satellite communication. I want to congratulate all involved in planning this exciting event and to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this historic celebration. We have here Mr. Ben Goodman, who is a legislator assistant of Mr. Representative Michaud. And we have here Mr. Mackenzie, who is a legislator assistant of Chelly Pingree. Can you come here on the podium, sir?
dear friends, I'll read a letter from Representative Pingree. Uh, Cher ami, it's an honor to offer my greetings as he recognized the 50th anniversary of the Telstar satellite's first transmission. I'm sorry I couldn't be here with you, but I think this historic event is well worth honoring. As a representative from Maine, I'm very proud that my state had such a prominent role in Telstar's history. I admire Senator Margaret Chase Smith's leadership in advocating for Maine to host one of the stations. Thank you to the representatives of the Margaret Chase Smith Center who are here today. Maine construction company Chinbro as well should be applauded for overcoming several challenges to help build the cutting edge earth station in Andover and I'm glad to hear that Ken Chinchette is here to mark this important day. The fact that the station is still in operation 50 years later is a true statement to the level of craftsmanship in Maine. This satellite and its monitoring stations were revolutionary for their time and have had a significant impact on our everyday lives. Telstar's first successful broadcast triggered technologies and events that continue to make the world a smaller place. Fast forward 50 years. This summer, we'll think nothing of turning in, tuning into the London Olympics to watch as they happen. From morning to night, we have all the information we want, and much that we don't, instantly available. And we depend on the hundreds of satellites in space for everything from deciding whether to wear a raincoat to finding the best route to the grocery store. In fact, we're so connected today that having the world at our fingertips doesn't hold much magic anymore. It's too bad, in a way. To see those first live images and sounds that Telstar broadcast across the sea, from Earth to space and back again, was really an amazing thing. The moment held possibility and hope that technology would bring the world closer together. Thank you and best wishes, Shelley Pingree. So, after the representative of the uh, state of Maine, we're going to talk with a representative of the uh, region of Brittany in France. Isabelle, est-ce que vous êtes toujours avec nous? Oui, Philippe, je suis là. Monsieur Barquet will now speak about the importance of the economic development here in Brittany. Monsieur Barquet. Madame la Ministre, Madam Minister, Madame la députée, Madam chers amis Representative, Américains, dear American friends, Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants de l'État, Mesdames et Messieurs les Representatives of the State, Messieurs. Elected Officials, Ladies and Gentlemen, Madame la Ministre, Madam Minister, je tiens à saluer allow me, first of all, to acknowledge on behalf of Britain's Regional Council and on behalf of Pierre Massot, the new president, your willingness, clearly shown by you since April 2010, the day you joined France Telecom Orange, to upgrade the Cité de Telecom à Plumer Boudou. You've always affirmed your strong interest in this asset as an opportunity to strengthen the relationship between the organization and its employees, thus renewing the close bond between regional assets and the history of the region. This history, allow me, I will not describe it in my remarks because we have had the opportunity to relive it an evening in Lanyan in the company of many of the actors involved in that history. That history and I want to thank all of those who allowed us to better understand and apprehend the fabulous double adventure, the building of the Radom on one hand, and also the first telecast that forever transformed the future of communications and television. Today, Brittany is pro proactively and ambitiously committed, as it was the case in 1958 with the transfer of part of the CNET, the National Center for Telecommunications Research, to Lagnon and the building of the Radom to the development of digital technology today. It is a major stake for Brittany and an intricate part of its economy and development. Bretagne Development Innovation ensures the strategic leadership of the project and digital technology is 
And digital technology is as much a means of access to our region as our land, air, and rail transportation links. Such is the reason Britain supports the competitive cluster called Image Réseau, an essential tool to ensure there is synergy between the skills and know-how of companies and researchers all working together for the common goal of strengthening the innovation chain. For that reason, the Technological Research Institute become to 20 12 label is the culmination of the determination to solidify anchor digital technology in Brittany. The first phase of the project called Brittany Very Late Large Band was approved by a decision of the Prime Minister in March 2012 for 65.9 million euros for investing in the future. The project is part of a total of 385 million euros, an European investment to benefit local regions. Digital technology will play a determinant role in our region in the development of our industrial capacity and thus in the creation of jobs throughout the area. It will be a sustainable investment if all the industrial actors in the food industry, maritime and energy sectors take ownership of it. The intention is to create an industrial ecosystem solidly implanted in Brittany and all of us must ensure its development. As we celebrate today the 50th anniversary of the Raidome of Plumel Boudou, I thought it was important to report to you the objectives that we have for the region at present. Those responsible for the first satellite television link with the United States showed us the way and proved that that which seemed to be from utopia then could be reality today. And of course, it is following in their footmarks and with their same enthusiasm that we wish to build the future of Brittany and Tregor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Marquis. We will conclude with a song specially composed by L'Ensemble Matthäus for this occasion, directed by the famous Jean-Christophe Spinozzi. And now, my music, please. Bonjour, hello, good evening. Um, before to play Vivaldi in this uh, second part of concert, we, we will play now for uh, our American friends uh, by George Gershwin, Summertime. Blondin. I don't know uh, uh, how is the weather uh, in the uh, USA now, in uh, Washington now, but here it's not terrible. Jumping and the 
Thank you, Washington, and goodbye. We so will much, end uh, our Isabel. evening with a concert, and I'm sorry, I know you will keep on working. À bientôt. À bientôt. Thank you so much, Isabel. You were great one more time. And uh, if the weather is not, uh, as you said, terrible Nous allons poursuivre in Brittany, notre soirée avec we're going to send you some sand. Et donc, uh, je vous demande de rester à vos places. Merci. Thank you uh, to be here. Thank you. It's fantastic to have you there. And for the, our guest, not for everybody, I'm sorry, we're going to give a commemoration medal and a high Tripoli medal also. So we are waiting for you in 50 years. So in, uh, we're going to have a little break, and after, we're going to talk with the eminent specialist of the space, eminent specialist of the high technology. So I invite you to, to breathe for a couple of minutes and uh, to, to stay with us. Mm.